Here, pick a spoon. Any spoon. All right, this one. Good. It is a very, very strong spoon. It cannot be bent. I collect spoons. It's not some kind of strange fetish. There's actually a reason for it. And I collect especially super strong spoons that cannot be bent. This one actually I pilfered from, from a cruise. Why am I interested in this? Because since the 1970s, I've been doing magic as a hobby. And I was intrigued by an effect, first introduced then by the infamous Uri Geller. Uh, he pretended to bend spoons with the power of the mind. Well, being in the magic community, I knew that that was not the way that it was being done. And uh, along with other magicians, I resented the fact that the magic tricks that we worked at and were performing were being presented as if they were some kind of paranormal event. Well, here is a very, very strong spoon. It really cannot be bent. Well, unless, of course, you have the power of the mind. And then, look at that. It looks like that spoon is actually bending. And look, it becomes soft and flexible. And yet you know logically that that is impossible. That spoon cannot be bent. So I do lectures on this. I hope to foster critical thinking. And I go and give out the spoon to people to make sure that it cannot be bent. And on occasion, there were some strong men who managed to bend it. This is the reason that I look for really strong spoons so I can perform this effect. And I can assure you that it is being done by perfectly natural means. Although there are people, including a, a performer who was going to give a seminar at the University of Alberta, which the university luckily canceled after they realized how silly it was, who was going to teach people, doctors actually, that they could bend spoons by the power of the mind. Well, I can tell you that if any performer is bending spoons by the power of the mind, like the amazing Randy says, they're doing it the hard way.